Okay, here's our Passat. Uh, it's a GTE 2016. Uh, I've got a error code on the EPC and sometimes also the engine light. Uh, I think that is because it's falling victim for the wastegate rattle. If you don't know what that is, it's a bushing in the turbo that goes bad. So the wastegate flapper isn't closing properly. And that gives the boost controller the wrong values and the, the wrong boost pressure. Uh, that sends the car into sort of limp mode. Uh, it's hard to get it above 80 kilometers an hour and it's really slow. It doesn't use the turbo at all. These cars are supposed to not have a problem with it, but uh, yeah, you tell me. The wastegate axle for the flapper back here. I don't know if you can see it, maybe I can get you guys in here. Yeah. You can see this. It's not too good. And as soon as the engine starts, we get the EPC fault message and uh, sometimes it throws the engine light. So I'm going to remove the turbo and uh, see if I can, uh, it's supposed to be bushing in here. Maybe I can change it. If I can't, I will go to the parts store and get a second hand turbo actually. I found one not too far from here, from a car that's only done, uh, I think it was 1500, 15,000 kilometers. And this car has done 140,000. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nice car, we really like it. It gets incredible MPGs even when the electric is out. This part frightens me a little bit. It's the high voltage side of it. You can see here that it, it's liquid cooled and it has its own coolant reservoir that's actually secured. So you're not supposed to go in there if you're not a certified mechanic. Uh, yeah, so I will not touch that part. Only the turbo over here. I changed the turbo on my old BMW 535 diesel. And uh, this actually looks like we got a hell of a lot more space in here. You can see my hand here, it's, it's a lot of room. We got a V-band clamp for the exhaust. We got... Uh, uh, I think it's a heat temp sensor. I don't know. Let me know. Uh, we got the oil lines, uh, the water coolant lines, and I think that's the old oil line. I don't know what that is, but it doesn't look like it's too hard to get out of there. And the, the charge pipe. Yeah, let's get started. <laughs> progress done the charge pipe is out of the way and uh, the intake pipe I don't know what that is I guess it's some kind of uh, crankcase ventilation pipe goes into the top of the valve cover I got the heat shield out I've got the disconnector out of the way and um, yeah I'm thinking about Starting to remove the inlet pipe and uh, the oil and water. And so far, I only used a T30 Torx, the 10 millimeter uh, XCN or what they're called. I don't, I can't recall right now. And uh, 10 millimeter socket. So not that many tools required just yet. And there you can see it's a 30. T30 there, probably, yeah, there too. Uh, I've got a uh, hex bolt there. Probably T30, that one in there as well. So, 
Not a lot of special tools. Let's see uh, when I get a little further down the road. It took just about an hour to get it out of there and this is the first time I'm doing it and I actually don't know where I have all my tools. So I spent a lot of time searching for the right tools. Turned out you don't need as much, you need a 12 millimeter socket and uh, a 12 millimeter key for the exhaust manifold. Uh, uh, T30 Torx there and here into the engine block the oil return pipe also t30 this is just uh, clamps on these two uh, and, uh, and t30 pretty much everywhere uh, i had a six millimeter hex i think for the v-band clamp so all right this is it and uh, i hope that this is the issue it moves around quite a bit in there so let's turn it on its face let's see what's happening in here yeah i don't know what do you guys think can you see this i mean when it moves it doesn't shut properly you can see it in there i think that's it i hope that's it you see the axle moving quite a lot and the default has come uh, first the first times we got it you just had to restart the car like it was jammed so I, that's all the white stuff here I bought some high temp uh, ceramic high temp ceramic uh, lube to I, I thought the, the axle was sticking so you had uh, this electric actuator had to work a little too hard oh yeah you can just remove that one i didn't find a screw for it and this is why you don't need a screw it just sticks in there that's will make life a little easier and then next time because you can't get a socket on this bolt because the pipes here all right uh, my plan was just to grind the weld off uh, and uh, get uh, the axle out of here I don't yeah if this isn't the issue as at least it's no good so I will try to get it out of there and uh, and have a closer look on it maybe I can you see you have a, a pin here can punch that one out and then you get access to the bushing under here. My plan is to turn the new bushing on the lathe and maybe turn down the axle a little bit and then weld it back on here because uh, the replacement turbo is uh, around 700 euros. The cheapest I can find that's in good condition. There. You can see here in the video how worn it is. It's properly oval shaped. I don't know if I can measure it. I will try to. That measurement says 10.8 and this says 11.5. So I'm guessing uh, this is the problem. How worn that bushing is. Uh, Another problem though is that uh, I can't get the axle out of here. It's too tight of a space. Oh, it turns out I couldn't get the flapper axle out of there. 
uh, I couldn't get the little pin out of the bushing and I couldn't uh, weld something onto the bushing and try to slide it out to there. Uh, and the turbo is quite worn, so we plan to keep this car for at least another 100,000 kilometers. So a new turbo now that's in better condition, it's not a bad investment. Uh, so I'll take my old Mazda pickup truck, my Grey Wolf, and uh, have a nice little three hour road trip to go get a new one. And I will see you guys when we get back to the workshop. You can see here the difference on the turbos. Um, the edges on the impeller blades are a little worn on our old turbo. Uh, you can see it drained quite a lot of oil through here. Either they clean this or it's just in very good shape. I hope it's just in very good shape. Um, the impeller looks new. Everything looks quite new actually. Uh, you can see the difference on the in the pipes and our oil is our turbo is covered in oil, and this isn't. So I hope this will fix it and make it a usable car again. Okay, I'm going to start the install now and the time is let's see what time is it it's half past one uh, and uh, i'm not going to time it but uh, it will be fun to see how long it takes to do the install so I'm starting at uh, half past one. All right, let's get it on. Okay, it's starting to get to be time for the test ride. Um, here's the fault codes. They're there because the engine isn't on. I've uh, scanned the codes and I have the turbocharger, supercharger boost system performance. The turbocharger boost control position sensor circuit low. And the intake air temperature sensor, sensor one circuit high. Uh, I will just try to clear them. Yes, has been performed. And then we will read the fault codes once again. No codes in the module. All right, um, time for a test drive. Let's see here, when I start it up, you can see the lights go out straight away, change battery in the key. But now it's in it's in fully electric mode, so the uh, engine isn't running. I have to start drive it to get the engine to turn on. So I will do that. Okay, so it says inspection now. Uh, I will do a oil change as well, uh, but I have to get the car into hybrid mode and uh, hope that the engine starts when I start to drive it. Let's see what happens. There, the engine kicked on. No code. 
codes as far as I can see. I will drive it for a little bit and then I will do an oil change on it to flush out the new turbo with the oil from the car and then do an oil change on it. Okay, uh, before the EPC code came up straight away as the engine started and as you can see now, no problem. I will drive it just a few kilometers and then back home and I will check for leaks and uh, do the oil change. I hope this video... Okay, that's it. Uh... I changed the oil. It's really straightforward on these cars. Uh, you drop the belly pan, you have a couple of T40 in the back and a few T25 torques around the edges. You drop the belly pan, you have a drain bolt in the oil pan, that's the 19 millimeter. And then you have a uh, oil filter in the front of the casing. The engine takes four liters of oil. Uh, so I, I did that, I have driven it further and more and there is no leaks and there's no codes and no lights. I'm really happy with it. It was not that hard and it didn't take that much time. And uh, I got quoted 2,200 euros at Volkswagen to change the turbo. And I found a second hand one that was in very good shape for 700 euros. And I switched it myself in under two hours if I haven't put all in all that work into try to save the old turbo. So I'm really happy with it. I hope this helps you and uh, you can, if you have the same problem as we did, you, this will sort it out for you. So thank you for watching and I will hopefully see you guys in the next video. Thank you.